For this brief exercise at the end of chapter 3, I'm going to demonstrate some variations on printing Hello World. So let's open a new program. We'll call it chap3ex1.py. So we'll start with the standard Hello World. Let's save and run that. So there's Hello World, just like we saw in the lessons. If we try to split it up into two parts, in two print statements, like so, watch what happens. So hello goes on one line and world goes on the next line. That's because by default, print prints a new line after it prints its argument. So what we can do if we want this to be on the same line, we can use a second argument, end equals open quote, close quote. That will say, don't end with a new line, end with a empty string. Now watch what we get. So we can put hello world into two print functions, but to get it to be on the same line, we have to add a second argument to the first print statement, end equals empty string, to have it print on the same line. So let's look at one or two other things real quick. Like I said, this is going to be a short exercise. What if we want a large gap, like a tab? Well, we can enter a tab into our string, but what also works are special characters, such as, for the tab, backslash t. So watch what happens here. Notice it printed it over a tab. Backslash t is a special character that represents a tab. You can place it into the string as is, or optionally, we can use concatenation. So watch how this prints. Be the same result. File save. Back to the command prompt window. Okay, same result. But because it is a lot easier, it's easier just to put the backslash t into the string like that. There's also a new line character, backslash n. Watch what it does. It automatically causes a carriage return line feed. And whatever follows the backslash in will be printed on the next line. So those are just a few variations in the print function that we can work with. We'll be looking at other examples of modifying the print function later in the course. For example, we'll be looking at format strings as a way to better place our output. Although, and I say this in all the courses that I teach on programming also, I'm not very interested in how the output looks, or I'm not as interested in how the output looks as I am in getting the correct output to start with. So I won't emphasize fancy printing techniques, like how to set things up in columns in this course, because your primary focus is learning how to compute using Python, and I'm much more interested in the output being correct than it looked good. But with that, we're finished with this exercise, and that wraps up this chapter.